Hey guys, Equarist here, and in this video, we're going to talk about the single-handedly best purchase I've ever made on this reef tank. This purchase was so good, I can attribute it to most of my success with keeping this reef tank. It's one of the rare products that is cheap and actually works really well. In my opinion, this is an S-tier product for cheap reefing. By the title of this video, you probably already know what I'm talking about. But make sure to keep watching till the end of this video because I give some really good tips and tricks with this product. Like always, smash that like button and subscribe and I'll see you after the intro. Now the product I'm talking about is a Marco Aqua M50 mini hang on back protein skimmer. Now, when you look online, you'd see hang on back protein skimmers are crazy expensive. And I mean crazy, like averaging $250 to $300. This skimmer coming in at $50 to $60 is a steal. And usually you'd think it wouldn't work as good since it's a budget skimmer, but you and I would be very wrong. Now, from my knowledge, a protein skimmer is a glorified air stone, and it works by creating so many bubbles that mulm and other organic compounds will collect by chemical attraction or something. And then the bubbles will start accumulating and then overflow into the collection chamber. This product also uses a needle wheel, which actually creates a lot of bubbles. And I've heard of other skimmers just using air stones instead, which is kind of ironic. Skimmer has a tube connecting to a hole on the collection cup in case it ends up overflowing. The skimmate will just fall back into the tank or another container. I just wish it was further down because even though it's there, I still get anxious about it. The collection cup is fully detachable and can be removed to empty skimmate contents, but instead of taking out the collection cup and going through all the trouble and anxiety of not knowing whether I took it out and put it back on right, and whatever else comes with that, I just pipette the gunk out which is a lot easier. Pipetting the gunk is a lot faster and it also helps me sleep at night. So if you're like me, make sure to buy some large pipettes with this skimmer as it will save a lot of time and trouble. It'd also be a good idea to buy a toothbrush because gunk will accumulate on the outtake lid and the walls of the collection chamber. And it's also a good idea to clean those every once in a while. I put the knob in the water which is the primary water inlet knob to the lowest setting which is damn near horizontal. The reason being is that I want the grossest skimmate possible, and I want it so gunky and disgusting that you question reality, where you think, does this stuff actually come from my pristine looking reef? Now the skimmate is not yellow like pee, it's dark. Dark brown like poop. I probably run it so dry it needs a Pepsi every now and then. I put the small knob outside the aquarium, which is like the fine tuning air knob, wherever makes the water line from 0 to 25% of the outtake hole in the collection cup. This setting gets the foulest skimmate and I love it. It's so satisfying to pipe it out of the aquarium knowing it isn't there anymore. This is an extreme version of dry skimming, but it means I don't have to empty the skimmer as often, which is the main reason why I do it. Remember when I jokingly said that it needs a Pepsi every now and then? It's kind of true after a year of using it, and I've increasingly found that I have to tweak the underwater knob much more often, like every two weeks, where last year I probably did it three or four times in the entire year. The reason why I have to tweak it is because for some reason it's just inputting water and there are no air bubbles entering the skimmer. By tweaking it, I open the knob shortly and then close it back to get some bubble action going. And it was a good fix that lasted a long time, but I found out in the past three months, it just stops intaking bubbles in shorter time frames. I have opened the underwater knobs, which is what you saw earlier in the video, a little more to combat that, and it seems to be working, but there still needs to be further tweaking and observations to find the cause of this problem, because this is affecting both skimmers on the aquarium, so it's probably a problem on my end. My biggest tip with this product is to watch it closely when you first use it. I remember scrambling to turn it off a couple times, in the first 30 minutes of me setting it up. I think when you first start it, it goes crazy, and then after a little bit of tweaking, it balances out. From my experience, it takes a week or two to break in, and you don't really have to monitor it as much. Plus, there's much less bubbles that enter into the tank. To summarize, watch this thing, especially on the first day when you first use it, and make sure it's running correctly. After it breaks in, it's smooth sailing from then on. Another tip I have is with the small knob. 
Depending on how you turn it, you'll see water exiting the small tube connected to it. I don't think that's a good thing, because I mean it's supposed to be like an air tube, so like err on the side of caution and make sure you have no water going out through that tube. Lastly, gun can form in between the slits of the collection cup lid, and this ends up sealing the collection cup and air can't really get into the lid, and therefore there is no ventilation. I found that the skimmer doesn't perform as effectively, or even at all if I remember correctly, and when I cleaned the slits out, it went back to normal. So regardless, make sure to keep up on maintenance of the lid and the outtake just to keep the skimmer in tip-top condition. So far, I've had minor problems with the skimmer, and these problems are just problems associated with having a skimmer in general. I think this is one of my best purchases so far in my reef keeping journey, and major props to Marco Aqua for making great product for such an affordable price. It is very appreciated by many hobbyists like me trying to dip their toes into reefing, and it would even be a viable option to use on a semi-large scale for a hobbyist, as they are cheap and effective at their intended purpose. With that said, I love this product so far, and I'll see you in a bit.